Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video we're going to be looking at asset liability modeling. And what I'm going to do in this video is I want to try explain this as simply as possible for you guys. Um, it's one of the, the techniques that I think actuarial science has, was one of the most practical actuarial techniques and it's really helped people when it comes to investment strategy. So when you think asset liability modeling, you need to be thinking of investment strategy. Okay, how does it help investment strategy? Well, when you talk to people and you say, what do you want to invest in? What do you want to get out of it? And all these type of things. You will often hear people say, oh, I want a 10% return. And that's, that's a fair enough objective. You want a 10% return? That, that sounds great. But, yeah, that's not enough. That's, you know, that's looking at investing too simplistically. I mean, you're only considering the one dimension. What asset liability modeling does, and we'll get to a little example or an illustration of it, but one of its advantages is that it encourages investors to formulate explicit objectives. So just how you've got that 10% return, you want that uh, measurable performance target. So we want a measurable performance target, which that guy had it, so nothing wrong about that. It's just incomplete because what they also needed to, to put forward is a performance horizon. Um, another way of thinking about this is the duration, how long. You know, does he want 10% return annually, monthly, over the next three years, over the next 10 years? Um, you know, because, and is that real return? Is it nominal return? All these type of things. Finally, you also want to have a confidence level. Another way of thinking of confidence level is risk. So, I mean, we can basically put this in simple English which is return, duration, and risk. Okay, so now how do the actuaries, um, you know, what was the big breakthrough in investment strategy? What did they do that nobody else or none of the other professions was thinking about? And that is that they looked at the liabilities. So before someone would come forward and they'd say, I've got 10 million rand worth of cash. I'm seeking a 10% return. Um, I want to minimize my risk. Invest it. Go. And the investment um, or the asset manager, you know, would try and create a little portfolio, try and diversify it, um, you know, would take his fees and so forth like that. The actuarial approach to investment strategy says, well, Let's consider your assets and your liabilities. So we want to look at your assets and your liabilities. And now what we want to do is we want to create a model that models both the assets and the liabilities at the same time. So instead of just modeling the assets, so before we would just focus on assets, now we're going to be focusing on assets and liabilities. So when we build our model, we can have it as stochastic or deterministic. Let's go with stochastic for this example. It's a little bit more fun. Um, you're going to have certain parameters that influence both your assets and your liabilities. These are known as your dynamic links. So something such as maybe inflation, um, interest rates, um, currency currency rates as well could be another one. Uh, there's, there's quite a few. And what we're going to assume is that each of these things is a random variable that follows a certain uh, statistical distribution. Okay. What we're also going to take into consideration is that you have your assets. Your assets might have some parameters that only affect them. Uh, let's say if you're buying shares, the, the value of that share um, or the, the price of the property or something like that, that will also be a, 
a random variable. And then also with say liabilities, let's say you have a liability that's linked to, I don't know, um, you have to pay your grandmother's or mother-in-law's hospital bill um, if something happens to her. And that's again a random variable because you don't have medical aid or something like that. Sorry, I'm just making I'm making this up. Um, so, but the idea is that when in business you'll have liabilities that will be influenced by certain parameters, assets that will be influenced by certain parameters, and then a bunch of parameters that will influence both of them. Then what you do is you simulate all of these variables. So you put them all in together. And you'll run it something like a million times if you have the computer power. So a million times you pick, okay, maybe the first run we pick one there, pick one there, pick there, there on that distribution, there on the distribution. And it generates a, a run out of space. So let's put it maybe over here. It generates an answer. Then you do it again maybe picks these ones randomly on the curve. This is their probability density functions. And it starts doing this. You keep doing that. And what you do is you plot, you end up plotting, say, a, a little distribution. So your input is distribution and your output is distribution. And let's say this is your target, is to get um, a return above that amount, um, that will indicate your risk. And in the model, you would have stated what your duration is. And the great thing about this is that you can see, uh, or you can stress test it and do some scenario testing, and you can see which variable is the biggest, uh, you know, has the biggest influence, has the biggest impact. Let's say it turns out inflation has the biggest impact then what we can do is we can rearrange our assets in such a way that they are immunized against inflation. Then do it again and compare our results. So we'll have another one that has maybe got inflation taken care of. And this one might have, you know, might have a better risk, but a, a worse return. And what the actuary will do is they will keep playing around with different different types of assets, putting it in the model and seeing what happens. And because of the dynamic links, it's very difficult to do this without using a model. Uh, when I mean play around with assets, I mean maybe say 30% in property, 10% in bonds, 60% in shares. Or you might find out that actually doesn't work out at, what, at all. Um, inflation is quite high. Um, or tends to be quite high, let's rather go with 60% in property because we believe property will be an inflation hedge and let's go 30% bonds that have got an inflation protection and only 10% in shares, something like that. And you compare each portfolio that you do will, with a Monte Carlo simulation, give a certain distribution. Once you have that distribution, you can do your confidence intervals, you can see, okay, what is the probability that we meet the criteria that we, you know, manage to reach our objective. Um, and maybe what you might find out is maybe this 10% return is unachievable. Um, you know, you can say, well, look at this. There's only 10, we only hit a 10% return 3% of the time. Um, and you can more align uh, investors' um, expectations. Also, by taking liabilities into consideration, you can kind of have a better understanding of risk. So someone will be like, I want to minimize risk. Well, yeah, everybody wants to do that. But what risks do you want to minimize? Because it's easier to minimize some risks than other risks. Um, or if you've got more exposure to, say, market risk, it's better to do something that tackles market risk rather than something that's trying to tackle market risk and credit risk at the same time and then you sacrificing unnecessary return for a risk that you don't have exposure to. So the great thing about this or about this technique and why it's so successful in uh, investment strategy is because it is efficient when it comes to risk. And we're going to look later in the course something called risk budgeting. Um, but yeah, it's really cool how 
we're going to be seeing some actuarial principles coming into finance and actually helping the, the entire investment strategy. And this is something that quite a lot of non-actuaries now have also started doing because of its benefits. But there we go. That's asset liability modeling in a nutshell. Um, probably later down in the course, we'll do some more in-depth videos around what it is and all that type of stuff. But I thought it's important that we have a nice, quick little introduction to it. But yeah, thanks guys so much for watching and hit subscribe. New videos coming out every single day around finance. Cheers.